Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video. A bit of an update on my week that was. Um, some happy mail and some finished objects for cows. Not a lot, but let's get started. So my week started really well and quite sparkly with receiving a postcard from Barbara Leinhardt, a subscriber. She um, subscribes to all our channels and she always puts lovely comments. And I got this early this week because today is Sunday. Um, she talks about two uh, female manatees being rescued by SeaWorld. I love our SeaWorld here on the Gold Coast. I love going to see the polar bears exhibition, especially when a new baby has been born. But yeah, that was a lovely start to the week and certainly put a sparkle into my Monday. My week finished with hand-delivered Happy Mail from a friend. My friend Ulia had been away to the Crochet Guild of Australia conference in Maroochydaw and in her gift bag were some magazines and she said she thought of me and she dropped them into the office on Friday. So Simply Crochet and a little amigurumi pattern booklet for four amigurumis. I quite like the frog and the squirrel. Um, I've yet to look at them in detail. And then there's this book that um, covers quilting. Now, I've had a lot of people say to me I should do quilting and take up sewing. Look, I'm not a keen sewer. I prefer knitting or crocheting, and I think quilting would require too much attention to detail and care, and I sometimes am a bull at a gate. But this is a lovely magazine, and it was lovely to have... A visit from Ulia. I was envious about the people she met at the um, conference. Claire from Bob Wilson 123, Chantelle from Fiberific. Oh, I wish I'd gone. I'm not, I wasn't a member, but I now am. I have joined the Crochet Guild of Australia. It's $70 for the year. I haven't gone through all the details of what you get or the benefits you get. But I highly recommend if you live in Australia, join the Guild and support the Guild. Um, there are lots of events they talk about and different things. And I noticed there's some free patterns on their website. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. So moving on to my finished objects, which are part of the cowls or make-alongs I've joined. I've shown my subscribers, and if you're new to the channel, maybe the first time you see it, my luck of the draw lap gown that I've made. Um, it's Nan's Next Knots Cow Luck of the Draw. Um, I stopped at 13 weeks, and she goes, I think, for 20 weeks. 13 weeks with the border and the edging I was doing was big enough for my lap gown for charity because I plan to give this away to charity. I call my son Reeves calls it my licorice all sorts project. I put a um, bought nice border on it. There are a lot of ends, and I've sewn those in, and I thought the border would help support those ends and keep them in. So I'll put a picture at the end so you can see it laid out. Um, it's not very good on camera here, but I've really enjoyed this make along. Luck of the draw three with Nan's next knots. I hope she does luck of the draw four. I have a project in mind that I'd love to do and that's inspired by another YouTube my, um, channel has inspired this project but I thought wouldn't that be great for luck of the draw four. I use this is part of my scorched earth challenge. This is the Spotlight USA style yarn which is like a four weight or 10, 12 pie. It's really soft. It makes beautiful baby blankets and I am really happy. I used quite a bit of my stash up in the different colours of this yarn. The only thing I had to do was buy more black because I ran out of black and I had to wait for the black to come into the local shop. So that was luck of the draw. I'm also doing um, the calendar cow with Zeta's Place, the 2021 calendar cow, which is cowls. Um, and June's picture was inspired me to have a look at it and see what I could do. Now, I think with cowls, because you don't have to make cowls, I have made other things because I'm not a big cowl maker. Um, I do sell a couple at the markets, but not a lot of people wear them here. Never gets cold enough. But to be honest, I think I prefer to 
to knit a cowl rather than crochet. Crochet cowls don't inspire me, but the knitted ones have. And I've had this pattern earmarked for quite some time in my Ravelry store, I think. It is the Ica Cowl by Ross. Smells like yarn. Smells great. Oh. Anyway, I'll put a link to this pattern and to Ross's YouTube channel because I really must thank him for this. This was a wonderful pattern to do. Now, I have done 90% of this pattern to his instructions. The reason being he does it in DK in two colours and, um, and a certain amount to cast on. I had to cast on more and I used different colours, but 90% of his pattern I did. So here is my finished object for June's calendar cowl. And there you have it. Hopefully I have done the June picture proud. I'll put a, pic, a photo of that at the end with this and you can let me know. Um, I'll put it on. It's quite humid here today, so it won't be on for long. This is my type of cowl. I like them fairly close to the neck. And I like to be able to pull them up over my nose in the wind. And this is why it's ideal. I love this cowl. Now I have, I'll just take it off. I made it eight rows longer for my patterning than his pattern. And I cast on more, like I said. Now I made this in um, Panda. I didn't bring a ball band. Yes, I did. I dropped it on the floor. Panda 8 ply yarn, which is by the Australian Yarn Company, um, which I bought in Melanda. These were the colours I bought to make this cowl. And yes, there is a lot left over, but I will use these for other projects, these colours. So that was my cows, which brings me to my rant regarding cows. Well, a bit of a rant. This week I was watching um, Kerry Penny from the Happy Crafter crafty homemaker her youtube channel and she spoke out about her cow now i joined the spooky spring cow and had a ball being creative and coming up with something different and she'd received a lot of negativity in emails and comments that had more or less left her cow on a sour note now this is not the first time it's happened but it seems to be happening a lot at the moment with um up i don't know what you'd call it depressed people sad people who are picking at things that they shouldn't be anyway for me cows and mouths are for the fun of it it's not about the prize at the end or who will win and who does the best project for me it is about having fun challenging myself stepping outside my comfort zone and trying something new like this I did Granny D's moss stitch challenge because I had never crocheted a moss stitch and loved it I enjoyed doing it and that's what it's about for me so if it's not about that for you then why are you looking at them if it's all about the prize at the end then I think you're going about it the wrong way because none of us are millionaires that are going to put a huge prize at the end of a cow I did get some negativity when I started my birthday in Cal about the prize pack at the end not being worth it to post a picture every month. Look, that's your opinion and you're entitled to it. But really, keep it to yourself. Don't get on the keyboard and be a keyboard warrior because you've got nothing better to do. Here, there's talking about pandemic fatigue and is it be becoming quite... Um, noticeable on our Yarny channels the people are leaving nasty comments and being picky because we're all suffering pandemic fatigue um, they talk about being grumpy little things irritating us more road rage look for me if I'm feeling that things are getting me down I find something to do I enjoy like knitting crocheting getting out in the garden and yeah having coffee with a friend if you can, or Zooming a friend. Don't become a keyboard warrior because you are feeling down and suffering from sort, some sort of fatigue that makes you picky. Look, guys, if you do cows and make along, let me know in the comment what you like. Is it really important to you that there is a prize at the end? 
or is it about just having some fun and enjoying it? Because I really enjoyed making this. On a nicer note, <laughs> Fee, from, Fee from Oz claimed her prize for International Tea Day. I am smiling because it shows you what a small world it is. Fee lives in Western Australia in a suburb that is basically across the road from where Thing and I built our very first home when I was pregnant with my eldest child. I couldn't believe her mailing address when she sent it to me and it certainly made me smile and she sent me the loveliest email. So hopefully she'll receive her prize sometime this week and she's happy with it and enjoys it, which I'm sure she will. Anyway, until next time, please stay safe, take care, deal with that pandemic fatigue if you're feeling that you are suffering from it and have some fun. Until next time, have one crafty day making something you enjoy or do something that gives you some enjoyment out of life. Bye for now.